What's going on, guys? It's your friendly neighborhood dinosaurs here, coming at you guys with the comic book symposium episode one. And here is my awesome host with the most, Omega Pro. Go ahead and introduce yourself. What's going on, guys? This is your friendly neighborhood Omega Pro. And as I always say over on my channel, youtube.com forward slash Omega Pro, all you different types of ages, races, genders, and even you other species watching or listening to this podcast, you are welcome here. To the symposium of the comic book variety where we discuss comic books now we feel like we have an interesting dynamic here because uh co-host dinosaurs over here uh is more knowledgeable on comic books than i am i'm getting into comic books i started reading a few comic books last year and I'm, now i'm getting back into the swing of things now um and dino is definitely well seasoned in that so we have an interesting dynamic where I'm the noob learning. You guys are seeing me sprout into the beautiful butterfly. I'm in the cocoon right now. And Dino will be my, um, I don't know. What would you be, my cocoon? Your, <laughs> your, your tour guide through the exit of the cocoon, I suppose. All right. That sounds good to me. Uh, but so I wanna... think we've got a pretty good episode planned out for you guys today. Absolutely. As we go ahead and start off with our first thing to introduce you guys and that'll be the comic book symposium read and review so basically what this is is everyone who watches the show is welcome to go ahead and pick up for this week or for this next two weeks batman the black mirror which is a great story i've heard from scott snyder and he's also the person who's been writing batman through at least the the new 52 but i'm right. pretty sure he's been writing for quite a bit before that for like a, the new 52 storyline by the way is awesome even if you're not picking that up like the trades uh the the city of owls and and death of the family as well are awesome as well to to read yeah and so in this story we've got dick grayson otherwise known as robin uh to begin with and then nightwing eventually is now batman and he's also got his robin which is damian wayne so it's i'm assuming it's going to be a very interesting dynamic and judging from the death of Damien Wayne, when that happened, how close they seem to be. Uh, obviously, I've come into the into comics right at the New 52. Same with Marvel. I kind of started going off when that happened. So that's around where I started reading. So this is something that's going to be uncharted territory for me. And I'm pretty excited to read it. But that's what it's going to be, guys. Batman the Black Mirror. You guys can go ahead and pick it up. You've got two weeks, so two episodes of the show to check it out. So it'll be on the third episode of the show in which me and Omega, or Omega and I, talk about the book and give our opinions and we're definitely right. going to be waiting for you guys down in the comment section to tell us your thoughts on it and if you guys have already read it obviously you guys can still uh release your valid opinions into the comment section and uh we will talk about it here on the show also so, please no guys... spoilers um now yeah. one thing i did want to say first off is this podcast is a co-promotion for my my patreon so if you're watching this on my patreon page you get this podcast a few days early, uh, probably likely on Wednesdays or Thursdays around there. And then the podcast gets posted in full to your channel, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Yeah, on Fridays. On Fridays. So to get the podcast early, depending on when we record it, it'll go up essentially as soon as we're done recording it. And then that'll go up on my Patreon. And I'm doing a special right now. Usually it's $5 to get stuff like that early. But for any $1 tier patron, you get this comic, uh, this comic book podcast, as well as other videos of mine um uh early so feel free to go ahead and check out that patreon but with that being said donna why don't you go ahead and kick us off with the first topic so the first topic we have for today is as we're recording this it's wednesday and the batman versus superman teaser trailer just got released and we got to see our first kind of or one of our first looks at the batman suit and yeah man it is just impressive like i love it i like it it's so, it's so different from the Nolan series, like the Dark Knight series of the Batman suit. Um, and I feel like this is definitely going to be very interesting to see as well as uh, like this will be the suit that, you know, more and more people learn to to know and love. Because right now, anytime yeah. you think of Batman, um, if you're like a video gamer, you probably think the Arkham series or if you are anybody Which is else. Which similar to. Right. If, and if you're like anybody yeah. else, you're thinking of the Nolan series Batman costumes. And what people don't realize is that. There are many, many different looks to Batman. So uh, I think this is going to open up people's eyes and see that uh, comic book movies in themselves can go literally anywhere because there's so many different universes and things that happen in these universes. Um, but I feel like the, most people 
I feel like people that aren't really in the know kind of are going to look at this and be like, well, this isn't what I know to be Batman or something like that. Like, I feel like it's he's gonna always be... been in black. Just... Right, right. I, I really I really like the look, though, to be honest with you. I really, it... really liked it. I I honestly think like it's going to be great. I'm really hoping like the mask looks like it's, you know, like old Batman suits yeah. before the Dark Knight where like he couldn't move his head. And if that's the case, like that's just going to be an issue for me. Like the guy being like. Let me turn this way and that way. Like, that's just ridiculous. Like, the guy needs, Superman, like, if you're Batman, what's up, man? You never turn yourself. Yeah. Like, you got people coming at you left and right, and the only thing you have is your senses. And if you're, you know, stroking your neck like that, like, you can't do anything to the people that are coming behind you unless you straight up turn around. You right. need to be able to see people. And, like, that just looks ridiculous. So I'm hoping that, like, it, you know, has some kind of cut like the Dark Knight did. Right, like some articulation the for, yeah. yeah. So he can actually move his head around. But aside from that, I think it it's gonna, it looks amazing, and despite my <laughs> disagreements or disagreements with the functionality of it, if that does end up being the case, I still think it looks like the best uh, Batman suit of all oh, time. Oh yeah, when it comes oh to yeah, for the sure. Cinematic uh, history, so yeah, I'm for... definitely excited for that. And then obviously, the only thing else, the only other thing we got to see in this trailer was a uh, Superman suit, which is just the Man I of heard Steel like costume. Some, yeah, some very slight changes, like maybe more color or less color, knowing right. Zack Snyder. But um, yeah, I can't wait for the trailer that's coming out on Monday, guys. So definitely uh, look to see if you might be able to get some tickets. Apparently, it's in the movie theaters on. Yeah, Monday that was something. really like people are like, "Yeah, I got my tickets to go watch the trailer." I'm like, "You're you didn't pay money to go like see a trailer, I think, right?" I think they're free. I think free. The okay. Are free. You have to, okay. Yeah, but you got to be like on that, right? Yeah, hope. I mean, but I can't be asked to drive to DC to watch a trailer that's going to be online and like. 10 yeah, seconds. like I don't know. That's kind of weird to just sit there and spend money and then you know have to go all the way out to a movie theater to see. I mean, it's going to be awesome to see it in IMAX. Don't get me wrong, but I mean, what's it going to be? A minute or two long or something? Like I don't know. I can maybe watch the that. people who go to the theaters actually get more or something like that. Maybe they get like ten minutes of the movie and they're just not telling them. If that ends up happening, then I'm be pretty mad but uh, <laughs> i'll be yeah if, i'll be pretty upset if it's what i'm assuming it is which is what they're telling us it is which is just two minutes of a trailer we're gonna be able to see at home then like i don't i'm sure i'll probably see it in a movie when i go to right. see a movie in IMAX, i mean even then if it is the whole 10 minute thing how long you really think before it's out on the internet and even then like i would rather not see i agree 10 minutes of the movie which is going to segue us into our next topic which is going to be the terminator trailer mm. which just gave away <laughs> the entire movie seriously and this is just an overarching theme with hollywood and movies in general right. especially comic book movies these days i am definitely a proponent of the idea of just watching one trailer if any like all of us know we're going to go see the avengers too right. every single person knows they're going to go see that movie so you don't need to see a trailer you know what i mean but every one of us is going to at least watch that first trailer because, like, we have to get a taste. We have to kind of, you know, wet our tongues a little bit until we get to see that movie nine months after right. the first trailer comes out, you know. But – and it's it's super hard to not watch those trailers every time they come out, especially you see the, all these people online constantly saying – all the stuff about the trailers and you just got to kind of block your ears out, you know? Dude, for me, and I am surprisingly really good at that. Like, I don't watch trailers I, for anything. Like – it gets to a point where, like, uh, for example, uh, sometime it was early this year or sometime last year, you showed me Nightcrawler, Gone Girl, Whiplash, movies like that. And these aren't comic book films. I'm just saying in general. I didn't know anything about these movies. I just heard that they were critically acclaimed, but I stay away from that stuff, you know, because when I and see these like movies, the I like, yeah, I like to know nothing. So Gone Girl blew me away. Nightcrawler yeah. floored me. Whiplash. I heard what Whiplash was about, and I was like, well, that's kind of dumb. And that's why I hate going into things like that, because you, you exactly. get these preconceived notions, and then it's awesome to be proven wrong, whatever. But when you go into a movie already thinking, well, this is going to happen, this is going to be crap, or whatever, it taints your image. So for me, I haven't watched a single Avengers trailer. Yeah, you heard it. I've not that's, watched a single one. That's tough, but yeah. like, and, when and you I finally hear, end up in the right. theater, like you're yeah, going to get... Man. Like, it's going to be an entirely new experience, which is the issue with comic book movies especially. Like, in the case in point is, like, I made a video about The Amazing Spider-Man 2, like, a couple months ago. And it was me saying, like, the movie essentially was not as good to me because I'd seen three or four trailers that gave away the entire movie, including Gwen's death. And then also, 
the an even bigger issue is having the movies come out in different areas before it comes out in a, another area. You know, that I mean? is, yeah, it, it should come out, especially like I don't understand why you put put it out in Europe or whatever before you put it out in in America. You know what I mean? Like it. It's an American that, property. That, that happens a lot with comic book movies, am I not mistaken? Yeah. Didn't that happen with Captain America sure, as well? I'm pretty sure it's like all Marvel movies, like even That's... the ones that like Marvel doesn't own for some reason. And yeah. then like you, you at that point, like you cannot hide from it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It is just be everywhere. Like I mean, unless you, you like shut out for from social media week, for whatever like, though. Yeah, like a week or whatever. Like I mean, you can't really do that. You know, you got it. Yeah. You're on your social media, and all it takes Especially is that for one person. Creators, right? Like for me. You know I mean? Like, Dino knows how I get. Like, for me, if I know anything about a movie that I'm planning on seeing or anything like that, like, I get mad. Like, I'm just, why would you tell me that? Like, I don't want to know anything. I just, I just don't. I just want to go in blank slate. So, like, when you go on onto social media and you see people saying, wow, um, it's, it's a different thing when you say, wow, this part was awesome or I like the way they handled this, that or whatever. Like, that's fine. But when you go into, like, any specific detail i don't care what i don't care if you say wow that fly flew across the screen really well i'm like that ruins it for me because i wanted to see that fly obviously that's a huge exaggeration but for me like i just wanted i just like to be going into things not knowing much at all like that's just the way i like to go about it um you know if it's a big movie that's getting hyped up avengers you know like captain america batman versus superman like you're watching these movies you know that like let's just let's not beat around the bush i'm going to go see those movies that's just how it goes in fact there's a double feature happening for the first avengers and avengers days of ultron on april 31st at my local movie theater that i'm going to be attending probably gonna be in most movie theaters if not right. like an entire phase one into avengers movie you know like oh my god like, that'd be crazy i'm pretty sure there's going to be play in bigger cities where like right, right. people will be there the entire day waiting for you know the movie to come out right but going back before to the original topic the terminator trailer um which was to serve as a segue into you know talking about the spoilers and trailers in general but um still the terminator trailer john connor is a terminator like this, why like, imagine, is that in the trailer like, imagine getting there like seriously, i was probably dude. gonna see that movie re regardless you know what right. I mean? even though like the first trailer, i was like all right it looks somewhat interesting i guess i don't know and it looks like they're taking it i mean they're obviously taking it in a completely different direction obviously right. after this trailer but even from the first trailer seeing that it's about sarah connor uh being the person who got their their you know what i mean like yeah. it, like it's just ridiculous that you would then like obviously you're getting people who are like oh my god it's something new and different you're not just right, rehashing right. uh the first movie or whatever then you get those people into the theater but you might have just got them out of the theater by sitting there and destroying them right. by sitting there and, and telling them that john connor is a terminator and <laughs> and they like that's just ridiculous it makes that is almost as we were actually just watching the amazing spider-man today before recording this podcast and it's right towards the end of the movie i'm not going to get into spoilers or anything if you haven't seen the movie but right there's a scene at the end of the movie that is in the trailer apparently i didn't know because i don't watch trailers but dino told me he was like yeah that was in the trailer and i was like I mean, like, it's just, I don't think it's that big of a deal. It's just when the that, that one specifically, falls. not, not really, but like at the but same like, time, just, like, that's the same thing that happened though, almost except even more ridiculous that like the literal final shot of amazing Spider-Man two was in the amazing, uh, the amazing Spider-Man two trailer, like almost every one of them, if I'm not mistaken, where he's flinging the, the thing around and hitting Rhino. Like that is the final shot of the movie, literally from like that shot is in the trailer. <laughs> And that is the final shot in the actual movie. Like, that makes just absolutely no sense. Not at all, man. I don't understand. I mean, I can kind of understand, like, they want to make it seem like this this big, huge thing, this event that's happening. But that's what you would, ex would expect the climax to be or whatever. But, like, that's the actual ending. So, yeah, it kind of soils it. Yeah. So, the biggest point here is that the trailers in everything now apparently but m mainly comic book movies is what i care about because right. i don't watch a lot of trailers for other movies because i know I, i'm like sometimes i'll hear about a movie i'll be like oh this guy's involved this director's involved this person this actor whatever i'm like i'm gonna see that and i don't need to see a trailer like for gone girl or for nightcrawler and things like that i just saw if one trailer at all 
or no trailers at all going in and seeing that movie and it was a completely new experience i wasn't waiting for this to happen or that to happen right. and then i get disappointed or whatever it is like for the in the case of the amazing spider-man 2 me constantly sitting there waiting for like this scene with harry osborne to happen or this scene with spider-man to happen and then it never happens and getting disappointed or whatever the case may be oh yeah because weren't there shots in the trailer that weren't in the actual movie yeah and that's just ridiculous especially when they're shots that are like that would have been pretty cool to see right. and they just remove it just doesn't make any sense you know right, yeah yeah and then you know basically the point here is like don't spoil stuff people who are making movies and also everyone who's watching these movies and and looking up news that's fine for you you might want to know everything about the movie before it comes out but i'll tell you right now me and Omega do not want to know not at all. about a movie before it comes out. So when I'm scrolling down my subscription feed, I would actually prefer to not be told who's going to die in the Avengers before I see it. I would also like to not know who the main bad guy is in the Arkham Knight. Like, I don't want to know this kind of things. Please don't make videos about them. Uh, and if you do make a video about them, make the thumbnail and the title vague enough so that, like, if I'm right, just passing like, by... The main villain, yeah, the main villain in Arkham Knight or a death in... A new, it's even in worse the new than Avengers that. or like, whatever. It'll say something like major plot details leaked for Ar Arkham Knight, and then you'll see a uh, a PNG picture on their thumbnail of a, a character that you were not thinking was going to be in that game, and you're just like, uh, see for like, me, what was even like... the point of saying leaked plot details and and not saying what it is in the thumbnail if you're then going to show me who that character is that's obviously now in the game you know what again I mean? like, like i sense. stay away from all that stuff so like i'm not even subscribed i don't think to any comic book channels aside from like a few but i don't get you know i don't see any of those things or anything like that so i lucked out on that front but um yeah i, I can definitely unfortunately yeah. not that <laughs> lucky and just scrolling through my i'm eating my my lunch one day and then i'm scrolling down my subscription feed and find two ridiculous spoiler videos in my subscription feed in a matter of like two keystrokes or two scrolls of my mouse and i'm just like what the fuck <laughs> you know like i don't get how you can do that to somebody like so that's that everyone just spoilers please don't do them to people we don't want to see spoilers you know like that's yeah. why we watch one trailer for me in my case or no trailers in omega's case so especially for us please no more spoilers we will appreciate it very much so last in terms of our comic book symposium, movie news topic, uh, extraordinaire, we have the <laughs> Ant-Man trailer. Yeah. And like I said, we just had this huge discussion about how I only watch one trailer for a movie, and I did watch that trailer for Ant-Man. However, I, and I was kind of like, eh, I don't know, you know, this movie looks pretty cool but i'm still kind of open to another trailer so i did actually watch a second trailer for the first time in a long time yeah, for same. any movie but a comic book movie especially for ant-man and i have to say it was worth it i don't feel like i got anything really spoiled i just kind of now fully understand the tone and like mm -hmm. the idea what they're going for for this movie and i'm a lot more excited now than i was for the first movie so right. if you guys like if you guys weren't looking forward to Ant Man, I definitely recommend watching this trailer because, like, you'll you'll be laughing quite yeah. a few times. I was trailer. I was laughing. Yeah, it was definitely yeah. funny. Um, I like I like this Marvel. You know, I love Captain America two type Marvel as well. Don't get me wrong, that movie was awesome. I love Avengers yeah. Marvel. I love that stuff. But Guardians of the Galaxy and what Ant Man seems to be is just so charming and so lovable. So I think to anybody, even if you're not a comic book fan. I think these are for you. You know, I think the Guardians of the Galaxies, the Ant-Mans and stuff like the yeah. less popular characters, not only is it going to, one, sell them a crap ton of comics, sell them a crap ton of merchandise, get, get these characters buzzing, because let's face it, who the hell cared about Thor or Iron Man before the movies, really? Not too many people. Like, they became yeah. A-list characters once these movies came out. But Same not thing. only that, like those those characters were still like those were, those were Avengers from right. the, from the get go. So like right, they were right. still kind of taken seriously, even though they were like B list characters to like the masses or like even C. But like what they can do with these characters that are like D list, like Ant Man, you know, he <laughs> seriously, went, like, uh, an Avenger like from the top, and so was um his wife or whatever. Like and the Guardians of the Galaxy, those are like E. Or F list characters, like, literally yeah, no one man. ever heard about. They can do whatever they want with them, and it Absolutely. ends up being so much better because of that. Like 
in the Ant-Man trailer, they make fun of him being Ant-Man or like being named that like a thousand times. He's like, yeah, know? it wasn't like, my, just, it wasn't my choice. Yeah. Um, but that being said, I think the movie's going to be super hilarious. I'm expecting a, a Guardians of the Galaxy type vibe. I'm expecting it to have a lot of heart. Um, I'm expecting some good action scenes. Obviously, you see him charging with the ants in the trailer and stuff looks really good. Um, that being said, I'm not exactly sure if this movie's gonna be good. Like, there's something I don't know. There's something inside of me that's sort of like this I'm could kinda, be the redheaded stepchild, of right? The like, universe. I'm like this could this very well could flop. Whereas with Guardians of the Galaxy from the get go, I was like this movie's gonna be awesome. The I saw first the trailer for the Guardians of the yeah, Galaxy. Yeah, that was anybody perfect. Who watched it hooked. Like, Dude, you that was perfect. That say, right. This doesn't look that good. Like that, that was perfect for what it was, yeah. and it it completely told you what that movie was going to be. Yeah, like, that, nobody could perfect. argue that. Um, Ant Man, on the other hand, I think it's I think I'm gonna go to the movie. I'm gonna I'm gonna laugh, and um, you know, I'm gonna feel an attachment to Paul Rudd's character, obviously Ant Man, and I'm gonna I'm gonna feel I'm gonna feel some things. But at the end of the day, when I walk out of that theater, I don't know if I'm gonna get that Marvel experience. When you go see our Marvel a uh, Marvel film. I don't know if it's going to be necessarily something where I'm going to be walking out and being amazed like that. All right. Sorry about that, folks. We just had a few little technical difficulties. We're still learning how to do the comic book symposium to its uh, to its greatest ability here. Um, but essentially, where were you left off at? Uh, I mean, for you guys, it's an instant. But for us, it was a few minutes. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to leave the theater getting the full Marvel experience from Ant-Man. Regardless, I'm still pretty excited. And, I've, and of course, I'm going to go see it. And any trailers from here on out. I've got a grip of what the movie's going to be. So I'll just be skipping those trailers. But uh, the movie does look uh, pretty, pretty funny. And I think I'm going to end up enjoying it at least at a base level. I don't know if it's going to hold up to the Marvel candle, though. I think that it's possible that like the reason why this won't be the perfect movie is because like this is adapting what um whatever his name was i can't remember the the guy who's supposed to direct the movie what his vision was and adapting it into them being able to bring uh paul rudd's character into the marvel universe you know what i mean like originally he just wanted to make Ant-Man and just like let it be its own thing. Right. And like what he wanted to do was probably just not working for them. And so they had to – I mean he just wasn't down to do it without having his – you know, the way he wanted to do it. So that he had to leave. And then – um, so if that ends up really messing up the movie, that's really sad. But I mean maybe in the end they should have just let him do his thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because I'm sure they would have been able to find a way to like – they found a way to get everyone into the into the Marvel Cinematic Universe in the first place. So you, just, you might have had to do a little bit of messing around unless he just like really was far off base. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, right. But I mean, like if that's the case, then I guess they had to do what they had to do. But I feel like the movie could have maybe been a lot better if, you know, he was originally there. If Edgar Wright, now I remember his name, if Edgar Wright was there for the whole thing. But yeah, if that's the reason why we don't all like it, the way we have every other Marvel movie, then that kind of sucks, but it's just the way the movie business, you know? So hopefully the movie ends up being great. I really like this trailer. It gave me a lot more faith than I had in the first trailer. Uh, even though I kind of liked the first trailer, just like this trailer was heads and toes above the, the other one, you know? Yeah, so, yeah, absolutely. So that's it for mm -hmm. our comic book movie news topics. And here we're going to go and move on over to our TV reviews. So, Omega has been getting into TV, oh. uh, comic book stuff, and oh, so yes. I figured, but first, before we get into his thoughts on Arrow, season one and two, we'll talk about Daredevil, oh, and man. we've oh, been watching man. this together. We still have like three episodes left to watch. Please no spoiler, Arena. Yeah, we'll probably be done by the four they. Oh, yeah, true, true, or, true. Well, maybe not, but regardless, still don't spoil it for people. It's still like on, not even a week old. That's why we're not going to talk about spoilers, but. Right. But watch I it. Think like, exactly. I think what the main thing we need to talk about here is how good this is and how I think that they can totally transition Daredevil and probably eventually the other three or four characters into the actual Marvel Cinematic Universe. I think that is what them. they're doing because in the beginning, uh, the, the aftermath with the Avengers and stuff like that directly affected Hell's Kitchen, which is where it right. takes place, Hell's Kitchen, New York. So they're already kind of tied together or at the very least they're in the same universe. So. Yeah. It could get to a point where Daredevil makes an appearance in like Avengers 3 or something or 
what would be even cooler is if you see like maybe Thor or Captain America show up for a, a Daredevil episode or two. It would be or, tough for them to do that. But, that like, would, be would be really, really killer. tough. But I'm, can you imagine Captain America or something like that? Like in Daredevil, the TV show, that would be absolutely insane. But Captain it, America would be easy. But like the characters right. like Iron Man, like that's just not going to happen. Yeah, because all know, the like, effects and all that stuff. It. Right, right. They can, not even the effects necessarily. It's just getting – Robert Downey Jr. to <laughs> to be in a TV show like that, you know what I mean? Like he right. is like he owns Marvel right now. He's got that whip going hard, you know. Yeah. Like he's getting them at least three lashes a day, and um, Marvel's feeling the pain right now because like he's like he doesn't even have to do actual Marvel or actual Iron Man movies anymore. He's still like getting the most payment out of all of them. And granted, like Robbie Robert Downey Jr. is Iron Man, so like they cannot afford to lose him until they're done Absolutely. with like their whole vision that's like if hugh jackman have to pay them. yeah that's like if hugh jackman did something with x-men like i think out of anybody like hugh jackman just can't be replaced right now like who else is going to be wolverine and not only that but it's just how long has he been wolverine really when you think about it since early 2000s like you can't just like up and replace him so it's sort of like something similar like that but i think it's even more so with with uh robert downey jr because he just is tony stark like that he's not acting when he's like in the freaking thing he's That's just legitimately being, him. He, he's just being him he's like all right rolling do you and he's like really so he just grabs a drink starts fucking pounding them back and just that's robert downey jr congratulations yeah. But um yeah, so, so the only the only thing I wish is like they would have covered, you know, like arguably Iron Man's biggest uh story, which is like him drinking. I guess they kind of like I feel like they if I yeah. remember correctly, they kind of did that for like two seconds, but then like mm. threw it in the trash. Yeah. But like if they would have done something like that or just I don't know, I wish we would have had another Iron Man movie, but I understand that, you know, he has all the cars in his hands and he doesn't feel like doing it. So yeah. until like somebody else comes in hot on the runway and steals that place from him as like the avengers and i honestly think it could happen with spider-man if they do because i think marvel is going to do spider-man very well oh, and i'm just of like, that's course dude. like if if marvel gets this character which they obviously have and they mess it up in any way like they have to they're not messing it up destroy <laughs> every other character like i wonder if they even will do that you know what i mean because like they've right. obviously They've started to like phase out Fantastic Four, even just from their comics. They're like not giving them any. Um, I don't even think they're doing the Fantastic Four comic anymore, like in general. And they're trying to get rid of the X Men essentially by making the Inhumans so much uh, similar to them, and like just making them a big part of their universe in terms of the comics. So like they're trying to phase out all of the pe- all the properties that they have that aren't owned by them, and. Right. If they do this right with Spider Man, like it's just gonna be so good for them, you know? Yeah. And just for us, like as as fans, especially for me. Like I cannot wait to see Peter Parker do like be perfectly. And like we were obviously, like we said, watching the Amazing Spider Man today. Right, right. And like the Amazing Spider Man is horrible in comparison to the Amazing <laughs> Spider Man two. But like it's still like I still like that movie. I still like the Amazing Spider Man two. Obviously, because I just said it was so much better. But, like, I still love those movies for what they are just like, as a Spider-Man fan. But I cannot wait to see what happens in, when, in Civil when, like, War. Yeah, when you and... get, like, a, like Sp- the Spider-Man movies, you can enjoy them. Uh, and you can even enjoy them because you're a Spider-Man fan, similar to how I'll enjoy almost anything with X-Men because that's just – I just love them. So, uh, from that standpoint, you can you can see that. But – once you get them in like an actual good movie all around where anyone can enjoy, that's like where Days of Future Past for you. Like Days of Future Past, uh what was one before that? Last Stand was it? Or was that X Men Three Last Stand? And then That was it, yeah. It's and last, then there was Wolverine. Yeah, it's last something. I I felt like those movies, that's when it started transitioning when I was like, Yes, I'm not crazy. People are seeing X Men for what I see it and like No, that's... Last Stand was garbage. No, not Last Stand. There was one right before oh, Days of Future oh, Past. Oh, First class. I don't. Yeah, right. there we go. First class. First like class that, and Wolverine were good. Right, and then Days of Future Past, amazing. So like that. That that's that's what it's like for me. And I feel like when Marvel gets a hold of Spider Man, that's what it's gonna be like for you. You're gonna be like, I told you, people, Spider Man's the best. And like, I mean, like, yeah, but like everyone I think knows, like Spider Man's still a good character. It's just the like, right, right. Because I mean, there were there were at least two good movies with Spider Man ten years ago, or whatever it was now. You know what I mean? Like Sp- Spider Man one and two were great movies, especially two. Jeez. I arguably they were, they were, two is probably. Have you gone back and watched them recently? Yeah, I used to watch them like all the time. 
Like, I mean, I, last year I watched them at least, like, four times. I mean, I've watched them pretty recently, too. I don't hate Spider-Man 3 as much as everybody does, but that being said, I don't think they're anything, like, spectacular. I, I, Spider-Man I, 2 was a great movie. Like, you can't... I, I mean, it was... It was good but i mean i wouldn't call it like great like not like okay especially compared to like the movies we're getting now i don't know i mean yeah but like that movie is good like regardless even today but yeah so back to daredevil um <laughs> i think one of the things that really hooked us we watched it like right when it came out 3 a.m right. and on eastern time and we got to episode one and we we're like oh, it's, it's really good but I don't think I was hooked. I don't know about you, like, but really, I still no. wanted to watch more. But then we yeah. saw episode two, Woo! and I think at this point, surely everyone's seen it. If not, skip ahead. But episode two, the fight scene on episode two, was just Dude. the best fight scene I think I've ever seen in anything comic book related. Like it was that just, was ins- like the fatigue, the, the one shot, everything was just amazing. You see Daredevil. Sitting on the wall, just he's out yeah, of breath. Just, Somebody else comes yeah. up and he's with almost no energy. All the energy he has left, he just like flips him over. He's tired. Another person comes, he has to do it again. And it's like, yeah. oh man, it was so perfectly crafted. And then he goes into the room for a few minutes. You hear him talking to the kid, he comes out with the kid. And it's just like, wow, dude, that was just, that was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And I don't understand, I don't understand how you could like watch that and not be like, well, okay, obviously I need more of this. Um, yeah. Like, I feel like Daredevil, like, at, at the beginning of every episode, like, because I, when I watch them, it's pretty late. So, like, when I'm watching them, I'll be like, yeah, you know, I think this will be the last one. And then something happens in that episode where I'm like, well, I can't stop watching. Like, what do you take me for? So then I keep watching yeah. and watching and watching. So uh, we're, like, 20 episodes deep or something like that. We've got a few more and left to go. Huh? It hasn't even been 20 episodes. Ten. Oh my god, I'm thinking of Arrow. <laughs> yes, yes. But like the fight scenes just stand out in this show so much. Oh yeah, and they're I, so I good. I feel like I was having a conversation with um some people at the comic book store I went to, and it was with the store uh, manager and a guy who was in the store, and he was saying something about how like fight scenes and stuff that are filmed on film like actually apparently look or just seem a lot more realistic. And while we were watching, I don't know yet if this was actually shot on film but like there's certain like granularity and like stuff to the shots that look like it's from or made on film so i'm actually curious as to whether or not it was shot on film or not and if it was it definitely makes me see why so like there's people that don't want to switch to digital because like you go and and look over at the shots that happen in Arrow, for example, and like the fight scenes in that show, which are shot on digital, do not look nearly as good. And I don't know if it's the camera, I don't know if it's the choreography or the cinema cinematography. I think it's probably it's a pro- it's probably a combination of all three. Yeah. I think it probably has something to do with the choreography because the choreography just looks like they're dancing. You know what I mean? Like they're just they're too choreographed, I think. Like they're too they're, they just look like they're, you know, doing ballerina stunts. It just yeah. looks ridiculous, especially when they get like there's like one shot that every time I talk about this gets stuck in my head. It's like a shot where like they're really it's a really wide shot and there's like four or five people fighting and it just looks ridiculous. Like it was from a couple of episodes ago uh, in the current season. It, at, at that point, I was just like, hmm, <laughs> this looks just completely ridiculous. Yeah. So. That's something that, if nothing else, this show has on all the other shows. But I think that it's just, it's just really good. You know, yeah, like absolutely. it's just the acting is. I won't go that far. The acting. Yeah, is I was about to say the act kind of ridiculous. The acting like, is. Example, foggy, uh, and I do. I'll be honest when I say that I do not like Vincent D'Onofrio or whatever his name is for Kingpin. Kingpin. <laughs> I don't he like him just, either, dude. I don't know, like. Every time I've seen the Kingpin, and granted, I don't, I haven't read too many comics. I have like a few Amazing Spider-Mans where Kingpin is in it, but I haven't read a lot of Kingpin. But like, anytime I've ever seen the Kingpin, he's not like gentle giant, and then like suddenly actual giant with a lot of rage. Like he yeah. just seems like his character is just all over the place for me, and I'm, I'm honestly just not a fan of it. Yeah, I don't. I'm yeah. not. I don't like it either. Um... I was going to when you were saying acting. I'm like, um, you need yeah, to pull like the foggy, reins back. <laughs> foggy could could definitely use some work, uh, um, yeah, in a few places. And 
Vincent D'Onofrio. I could I could pass on that one. Right. You can miss me watching another season. I feel season like, where he's I feel like Claire is. I I feel like she's just okay. Like I don't feel like she's doing like anything spectacular. Um, Here's the- why I'll tell you why I don't think she's doing anything spectacular. I'm gonna need you to tell me which character Claire is. What do you mean? Is she the woman who was the first oh, person to know the oh, heat, yeah, or the, is she the, the one who works with them? Because yeah, I don't remember. She, she works. <laughs> she like, works with them. She works with there's them. There's quite a, there's quite a few people that just don't make that big of an impression on you, right? Because like they're just they're not. I mean, it's obviously a Netflix show, and I think the only person who's like kind of like I wouldn't say knocking out of the park, but doing like his best is, um, I can't remember his name, but the guy who's playing. Matt Daredevil. Murdock, right? Matt Murdock, you know, yeah. like he's. I think he's doing a great job. Yeah, I mean, I and, think he. I think what he's doing is. I don't think it could be classified as like amazing or anything. Like he's not like you know, yeah. he's not Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark or anything. But he's he's doing yeah. a, he's doing a good job at the end of the day. Um, yeah. Foggy, I don't like. Like he just rubs me the wrong way. Uh, Claire yeah. is just. I think she's okay. She's not like she doesn't take anything away from the show. The only character that I think really takes away from the show is Kingpin. Like just the way he talks and articulates things and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I'm just, just I just don't like just, it. Yeah, it's I'm not, not a fan. Okay. But other than that, though, action is amazing. I really like the way the story is going. Um, that being said, some of the actions that uh, Kingpin uh, does to sort of twist things over uh, in the storyline is pretty good. And I really like the way the direction of the show is going in terms of plot. Yeah. And like I said, action, of course, is just outstanding, um, especially in comparison to what I've been watching, which segues perfectly into my thoughts of Arrow season one and season two. Okay, so Arrow season one was, I'd say it was a little bit weird. Like I, w- I was still trying to trying to warm up to it. Uh, everything the thing about was, it was is like it was like the first of its kind. Like this is like right. the first time where we were starting to get like good comic book TV. You yeah, know what I mean, and I mean, yeah, like it's just it's incredible for what it was at the time. Yeah. Uh, one thing I have to say about Arrow is. For their casting process, they only selected the most beautiful human beings on planet Earth because everybody in that CW. show is beautiful. Like that's just CW. that's just what it goes. Um, but that being said, uh, I really liked season one. Season two was just a lot better in every regard. A bunch yeah. of twists. Like there was a season two was so much better than there, season one. It was, there was ridiculous. There was a point where you get like three huge twists which i'm not gonna say for obvious reasons three huge twists in the span of like an episode or two i was just like my mind just could not contain everything that was happening it was amazing and i i loved it i absolutely loved it i loved uh character development uh for some characters um i left the end of that season mad at oliver for a reason that i won't say um but i was it's like a year old at this point i mean like go ahead Man, why are you not wifing up Felicity? Like that gets me so mad. She, she's so, she's perfect. And yeah. we, I don't know if I should say this part. Like right towards the end of the, of the season, you know, you know what he says to her, right? You know, he says like he can't be with her. No, no, no. All right. Es- essentially, essentially, what he said to her was he was saying, "I love you." You know. And when that happened, I was like, right. "Yeah, Oliver." But it turns out it was just a trick oh, to to right, fool. Right, right. right, right. right. I was like, at that point, I was like, oh, I posted on Twitter. I was like, yes, Oliver is the best. And then all of a sudden, it's just like, oh, yeah, it's kind yeah. of upset. But yeah, those two, uh, those two seasons were phenomenal. I can't wait to get started on season three because I hear that it gets even better. The only thing that's confusing me is that apparently I'm supposed to watch the Arrow and the Flash back to back. Like, what's what's going on? Do I watch episode right, one so of the Arrow or the Arrow and the Flash? are like supposed to be taking place during the same time that we're watching them. Right. So like the episode that happened in December, which is where in season two, where uh, Barry ended up getting hit by the, the lightning mm-hmm. actually happened in December, almost on that same day that it aired. If not the same day, I, I don't know for for the exact date, but like it was like December 11th. They just mentioned it in the show today when he got hit by the, in the lightning. So that show is actually taking place over like that week that it happens, if that makes sense. Sometimes one day, sometimes two days, but like regardless. So right. it takes place mm-hmm. on Tuesday and then we have on Wednesday Arrow. So you're supposed to Can watch. Can I just comment how awesome that is? Like that is really yeah. cool to have both of those. Uh, but yeah, continue, sir. So yeah, <clears throat> that's, the, that's the thing. You just watch 
you watch one episode of Flash and then one episode of Arrow, and then so one starting season. So starting season three, am I wa- starting with the Flash or starting with Start Arrow? With the Flash because it happens. Okay. It, it's the show that goes first okay. every week. So and then like they'll reference things that happen. That is so cool. In the episode of Flash on Arrow the next day, like yeah. if Felicity goes to hang out with you know um, Barry, then she'll come back and say something about Barry or something like that or whatever happens yeah. to her. So like that's just it's one of the cooler things about. The I just love how it's so connected. Of, oh man, yeah. that's awesome! Yeah, I'm hoping that. I mean, we obviously got some some kind of TV show happening this year when the next seasons happen, which will be a team up show. And I'm not exactly how this is. I'm not exactly sure how mm-hmm. this is going to go uh, go down. I'm sure they're going to, you know, fully expand upon it at um, San Diego Comic Con or something, but. I'm excited to see what's going to happen with that. Like getting an episode where like Adam is teaming up with the Flash or right. um, Arrow's teaming up with Ar- or Adam and like they do their own thing or like even villains teaming up. To, I don't really care. Seeing it from the opposite perspective would be an interesting thing too. Like seeing, you know, um, whoever villains were working together and then like Arrow comes in and it's like he's the bad guy to them, you know, and like getting that kind of dynamic. It'd be nice to see them like c- tackle that kind of storytelling. Yeah. And then obviously there's another – I don't remember if this is supposed to just like – she's supposed to be a character that's coming into one of the shows. I don't remember. But Hawkgirl's coming into like this next season oh, uh, really? in some way or in some yeah, shape or form. So I'm not exactly sure if she's going to be like just a guest character that might end up getting a TV show of her own or whatever similar, the case yeah, may be. Similar to what we were touching on before with Marvel and their movies bringing out B, C, D list characters and skyrocketing them. I feel like they're doing uh, – this is also a great job here with the comics um, because really Green Arrow, Flash, people like that, like nobody really cares about them all too much. I think the Flash people do. Yeah, the Flash, like the Flash is definitely a higher tier than – than Green Arrow, um, but I think like giving them their own TV shows where they can grow and prosper. Again, like what Marvel does with the movies, this is also doing with those characters and you know helping to boost them and everything like that. And I just think it's overall really, really awesome. And I think honestly, the TV shows should be the future of it all because you get so much more character development, you get to know so yeah. much more than you would with the two and a half hour movie that you get over here. Like if I got to see. Hugh Jackman and all the X Men every week, like sign me up. Like Actually, I, I don't they're care. Doing an X Men show, but I mean it's not going to be like yeah, right. It's not going to be Hugh like Jackman yeah. and stuff like that. But it's going to be like you know some kind of show where they're using like their B, B and C list X Men, which you might not have even heard of. But like right. like Psylocke, still people awesome. like that. Yeah. Well, actually, she's going to no, be in the movie. Psylocke, yeah. But I'd say she's higher than that. But characters that are just not well known. But like it's going to be an X Men show. I'm pretty sure that is confirmed to happen, I'm and down. that's going to be awesome. And there's just a lot of great comic book TV happening. And then, like, we've also got a ton of great comic book movies coming out. It's just, like, yeah. a great time to be a comic book fan. And then the comic books are also heating up really well, too, which is segueing us perfectly Woo! into the comic books we picked that up. That was beautiful. This week mm-hmm. and some reviews, if we have them. We're obviously busy people, so we don't have time to read, especially when I'm picking up as many books as I am right now. Yeah, I picked up a stupid amount. Yeah, like, I'm – Going to the comic book store like twice a week. I have two shows to film, one on Tuesday and one on Thursday. And the Tuesday one, I'll end up getting maybe some of the books that I, did, I missed the week before. Right, and Thursday, right, right. I'll pick up my new books, you know what I mean, or whatever. And then like I also have to go to the com- one of the comic book stores on Friday to deliver one of the shows I'm making. So I'm at the comic book store a lot. And when I see some of the stuff, I'm like a kid in the candy store. Like I'll just <laughs> – you know, I'm just like really excited. So right. would you like to kick it off or? Uh, sure. You want me so to? Um, what I got recently, um, th- this I actually got a long time ago, but I finished up reading very recently. And that's all the issues of Superior Spider-Man that I had. So there was like, I believe I had uh, 1 to 12. And that is amazing. Oh, like Superior Spider-Man is nothing short of phenomenal one of the best reads in a while and that got me kick-started and that's when i became a fiend and got everything else so of course as you guys may or may not know my favorite superhero is wolverine so i had to grab some essential stories uh i just looked them up real quick and i was like okay what are people liking i asked uh the guy that works at my local comic book store what i should grab and he recommended weapon x which oh my god 
you have to if you, even if you don't like Wolverine, this book is pretty dark and pretty twisted. What Logan has to go through, it is yep. absolutely amazing, and I I loved reading that. This is a book that I think I'd read again, to be honest with you, just to keep reliving that and, you know, keep knowing, you know, the pain that Wolverine has actually had to endure and everything like that. It's just, it's really, really dark and pretty heavy stuff. And the other one is Wolverine Logan. Now, this takes place in Japan. And my God, what blew what blew away my mind about this one in particular was one scene where uh, it's it takes place in Hiroshima, right? And right. there's a scene where so is it the story that they based the movie off of? I'm not exactly 100 percent sure. I don't think so because in the movie, I believe that's when Wolverine like lost his powers and everything, right? Uh, a, yeah, yeah. That's not what happens in here. In here, it's okay. there's a, there's a love story but that does takes he fight. Does he fight the Silver Samurai, or whatever his name is? I uh, they don't. I don't think they refer him refer to him by name. Um, but it's a it's essentially a guy that has similar. Uh, powers to Wolverine. Uh, it's oh, like okay. in- instead of being invulnerable or whatever, he like can't be hurt or something like that. Um, so w- what ends up happening is he, uh, Wolverine meets this girl or whatever uh, after escaping through a pr- uh, from a prison. And I'm not going to get into too many details, but uh, there's a decent love story in there. And one part that just really blew me away that I loved is um, how I said it takes place in Hiroshima. Wolverine was in Hiroshima when we dropped the bomb on Hiroshima. So you see the atomic bomb coming down and whoosh, wiping everything out. And it was like seeing that and seeing the aftermath from like the perspective of a comic book and everything was absolutely amazing. And I loved it. Uh, this one's very, very short. So uh, you can definitely read that. I read it in the span of like 10 minutes or something. Uh, very, very good. I recommend that. I also uh, visited Comixology here on my phone. And I picked up some digital comics that my comic book store didn't have in stock. And what I picked up was New X-Men, the run from 2001 to 2004, because um, apparently that's a really good run of X-Men. So I definitely wanted to uh, look into that. I picked up Superman Earth 1 because I'm not big on Superman. I I actually had a dislike for Superman. So I'm going into some Superman comics, trying to get to know him a little bit better, see what his character is all about. Um, And I also picked up uh wolverine uh the uh, 1982 run apparently this one is a really really important and probably what people say one of the best storylines for wolverine uh this one's like 94 pages or something i'm just going to show you guys because i guess if you were to look it up it'd be pretty weird but that's the the cover right there for it and i'll be reading that soon um i'm like halfway through earth one uh superman and it's it's pretty cool i definitely like it i also picked up um i don't know if i have it here I do not, but I also have uh, the Ultimate X-Men uh, that I picked up. And apparently that one starts off weird but gets pretty good. So I just picked that one up. Uh, that's another trade that I picked up, Volume 1. And uh, that's everything that I got uh, recently and I've been reading. Oh, yeah. I'm, I might have beaten you out in terms of buying more. Okay. <laughs> I bought I bought so much that there's another two stacks of stuff that I can't be asked to show. In this oh episode. my God. Especially since I haven't had a lot of time to read even the stuff that's in this deck, but there's some of the stuff that I wanted to show. Right. So like I'm obviously a big Spider-Man fan and I don't have a lot of, or I don't think any of the Dr. Octopus um, <clears throat> issues from like pre 100. So right. I went to the comic book store and it was when I got like my first payment, of doing all this work that I've been doing. So I was like really excited and wanted to celebrate by getting something. So I got this issue, issue 56 of The Amazing Spider-Man. And it's got, there was two copies they had there. There's one that has, is the one I got, which has this nice big uh, crease down the middle. And <laughs> another one that had like, essentially the staples were about to fall out. And the cover was like a lot more bland and... That washed out almost, you'd say? Yeah, like all just right. the colors were a lot like... I mean, obviously, this this paper is supposed to be white, right? Mm-hmm. Probably. I would assume. I obviously haven't seen this book when it first came off the shelves or whatever. But I would assume this paper is supposed to be white. But in real life, for me, it's like more obviously like tan to almost yeah. like brown. But Oh, I, I lost sound on you. I can't hear you. Can't hear me? Oh, no, I can. Okay. So – the the sound or <laughs> the colors are a lot better on this one and like essentially the only issue is that it's got this big crease you guys probably can't see it but there's a big crease oh down yeah the I see it actually yeah yeah so there's mm-hmm. a big crease down the middle but like 
by comparison, this one to me was a lot better and I can deal with a small or, you know, big crease down the middle, yeah. but I couldn't deal with like having to like baby this book <laughs> as I try to flip through the pages. Right, so I'm right. excited to, and honestly, like one of the things I hate about reading comics is like reading them without having the full story. So this is apparently like one of the, or this is around when the Spider-Man book started getting longer um, runs or longer arcs and stuff. So I'm going to try to get as many of these as possible and then read it. So I'll come back to you guys with a review six months from now when that happens. But, uh, another thing I saw in there, I just like started scrolling through some of the stuff they had in their Spider-Man section to see if they had any of the five and six hundreds that I wanted. And they had some – they had this book. And this book has a really cool cover to me because I've used it on thumbnails and I've always seen this picture around. So I'll give you guys a nice little look at this. It's got this nice picture of um, Spider-Man in the black suit and uh, Mary Jane. And I really like the art on it, and it's from the story One Moment in Time, which I think is supposed to be really good. Or it's a, it's either supposed to be really good or it's the thing where they had to, like, not get married to save on me. And I'm just – at that point, I'd have been like, bitch has been on the on the way out to me for <laughs> years. So yeah. I mean, I'm not going to sac- – I'm pretty sure they had a daughter too, if I'm not mistaken. So mm. I'd be like, I'm not going to lose my daughter for my aunt that's 99 years old. Like, <laughs> go ahead and, and get, the, get the grave ready. Like, so – that's the way I obviously haven't gotten to read these yet and I don't have the full story. So I don't know when I'm going to read it, but that was 638 and they also had 640, which also is a pretty nice. Oh uh, yeah. That's and, awesome. Oh, uh, Enjoy the, the nice glare of everything <laughs> on my screen. So it's a pretty nice cover for both of those. So I will be excited when I finally get all of them. And um, also just wanted to show this, which I got, which is uh, ultimate Spider-Man number 12. And this is where, Miles is like pretty much getting ready to go to the Secret Wars, which is going to be this big event, which is ironic that Secret Wars is happening and so is Convergence at pretty much the same time, which are almost like these exact same stories. Mm. Basically, like all the universe is going to like come together and then like. Oh, speaking of that, I also I also picked up the Convergence issues. I just forgot to show them. But yeah, I picked those up as well. I didn't because I can't be asked. (laughs) Cool. Like these events, like just they kill your wallet. So. I'll let them kill everyone else's wallet and I'll just watch somebody's review. And by review, I mean them telling me everything that happens. <laughs> so I'm excited to see what happens to see Miles coming to the 616 because one of my favorite things was when I first started getting into comics and I saw the uh, Spider Man book, I eventually went out and found all the issues. And that was one of my favorite stories like getting to see Peter from the 616 universe come into the ultimate universe where Peter Parker is dead and see you know, Miles Morales and him go and get to see Gwen and, you know, who is alive in this universe and not in his and him get to see her, even though they're like pretty different characters. Like, it's just so cool to me. And like seeing them interact, just him like kind of mentoring Miles was just awesome. So I can't wait to see more of that once Miles is in the 616 after this event. And, uh, and so (laughs) next thing is, uh, I'm, I've got spider Gwen. Now this is actually what kind of got me to come back to comics after like a pretty long hiatus, probably like six months or something like that. So I heard about spider Gwen and I, I obviously am in love with Emma stone. So anything <laughs> Gwen Stacy related gets picked up. And <laughs> when I heard that she gets to become Spider-Man in this universe, or spider woman in this universe and like Peter Parker becomes, you know, the lizard. And then like he dies, like that just like blew my mind. So it's such an interesting idea. So I got, um, like an 18th printing of I was about to say what the, printing is that I've never seen that orange banner yeah so I mean like they <laughs> this is actually a fifth printing but yeah like this is this sold off the shelves like hotcakes apparently so like even my yeah I was about to say the first print is like still like $60 and my comic book store or one of my comic book stores has it for like 125 and I'm just like that's just not happening even for Emma Stone so yeah, my friend actually uh, texted me and said that he picked up Spider Gwen. I'm like, I didn't know you read comics. Like, I don't, but I'm going to start because of everything that happened. Right. So here's Spider Gwen number one, and uh, two and three, and I'm obviously pretty excited for number four when it comes out. It actually, might have come out today. I'm not sure, but I'll definitely pick and that up. Have you read those and yet? I read the and heard all. Obviously, I read and heard a lot about the Spider Verse, but I wasn't going to read Spider Gwen one and two and three before I saw or before I got to read. Spider Gwen, like the Spider Verse thing, because yeah. I just wouldn't have known what was going on. I tried to read it, and I was just like, "All right, well, this is just retarded. I don't have any idea what's going on." And so I just like put it down until I could find a a fifteenth copy of 
the her origin thing. And next thing I got is Silk. Obviously, like I'm into pretty much anything Spider Man. This is another thing that I'm pretty sure spouted out of the Spider Verse thing. So I'm definitely excited. This is also an Asian character. So you got a lot of diversity coming into these characters. You obviously got Silk, who's an Asian woman, an Asian woman, you know, coming into the Spider Man universe and just the Marvel right. universe in general. And then we also have Miles Morales coming into the main universe. So we got a black male and a, a Chinese or an Asian female coming in hot on the runway. So like there's a ton of diversity. You got a regular white female uh, woman being Spider Gwen and you got obviously Peter Porker. And uh, <laughs> so you got a nice ham. You got Peter <laughs> Parker and then you got Miles Morales and, and Silk and everything. So just a ton of different characters. And I'm excited to read these as well. I've had these on my shelf for a long time, but like I just started picking them up, and I was like, you know what? I definitely want to read this. It's called Sex Criminals. I have oh, issue one and two. Eyes. Also, <laughs> 59th printings. Um, so I'm definitely. I'll come back with more reviews next week. Right. But I've been really busy doing all this, uh, doing all the videos for the comic book stores. But I can say what I think about some of the Batgirl that I've been reading. This is the last couple of books, but I really like these covers. Like I remember when I was first getting into comics and. Um, I saw those and I was like, oh, that's not Barbara Gordon. What the heck? And then I found out it was like Stephanie Brown. So I didn't have issue number one, but I got to read issue number two. And I realized like, it's really interesting because obviously at this point, Batgirl, uh, the original Batgirl, Barbara Gordon is like in a wheelchair after she got shot down by the Joker and mm -hmm. she's the Oracle and everything. And she's trying to tell Stephanie Brown, like, yo, this isn't the life for you. You know what <laughs> I'm saying? And like, she's like, ah, fuck off, you know, so, <laughs> like, you know, she's going around pretending to be Batgirl essentially in like these um, like used clothes from the previous Batgirl. So she's just like a Joker. Like she doesn't even really know fighting and all this other stuff. And then like, right. you know, Barbara Gordon's trying to tell her like, yo, you need to chill with this. You're going to get killed. And like, because she's just a teenager, she's going around doing it every night. And so I'm definitely excited to see, I pretty much have like the entire run. I'm not going to show all the comics, but I have like pretty much the entire run and you get like one, and like 11 through 15 and they'll have like pretty much the entire run so i'm definitely excited to read the entirety of this but that's my comics that i got over the last couple of weeks and definitely expect more reviews from me next week and yeah. obviously the week after that we'll have our read and uh read and review with omega and i and then all of you guys in the comment section to tell us what you guys think about batman the black mirror absolutely so, those are the comic books we picked up we talked about some comic book movie news we talked about tv uh reviews daredevil and arrow and we definitely picked up some comic books this week and told you about them as much as we could and so that's been the comic book symposium episode one i hope you guys enjoyed it do you have anything to say Omega? uh thank you guys for your viewership uh again you can get this podcast early on my patreon page uh if you become a one dollar uh patron and if you find out hey this guy kind of sucks uh you can just not subscribe and uh you know you won't get the dollar taken out uh next month um but yeah come give me a chance you never know you might like me um my youtube channel is down in the description below um Twitter, uh, everything like that, all the social links and stuff, you can follow me at um, Twitter, at Omega Noodles, Omega Pro on YouTube, because plus one for branding. Um, <laughs> my actual Omega Pro Twitter got hacked, so yeah, that kind of sucks. Um, but I think that's it for the Comic Book Symposium Episode 1. Of course, we're still uh, kind of learning things, getting into the swing of doing this podcast, so any feedback or anything that you guys might have, feel free to let us know. Um, and also... Uh, you pick up that Batman, what is it, Dark Mirror we decided to go with? Batman Black Mirror. Black Mirror. You can find a link in probably both of our descriptions right. where you can pick up the book on Amazon. It's only – it's less than $10. And if you guys have Amazon Prime, you can get it in two days and then read it over the next two weeks if you don't have that much time. And then, right. uh, then when Comic Book Symposium Episode 3 comes out, we'll all review it together. Absolutely. It's going to be a great time and we'll do that again every other week and we'll pick different trades and stuff. We're going to do trades instead of anything else because you get a full story that way. Uh, so that way there's actually something to review instead of being like, wow, I wonder what's going to happen or something like that. So yeah. uh, definitely uh, get on that. And of course, if you have any trades you'd like us to check out for the next uh, read and review, feel free to leave those in the comment section down below as well. Again, my name is Omega Pro. And I'm Dinosaurs, and thanks for watching the Comic Book Symposium, Episode 1. Have a great day, everyone.